You know what? This is actually gotta be my favorite pipe I've designed here. And I've been using it like crazy. This thing is a monster. It rips. I mean, like, I wanna put water in this thing and make you guys watch me hit it. Today we are talking about the wedge bubbler. This is uh, kind of the newest small 14 millimeter bubbler. It's not necessarily as small as our pocket bubblers, but it's still nice and compact. It's like everybody thinks that you you you, know, you sit down and you start drawing and like you just like come up with these designs, you know. And in this case, somebody starts digging in the cat library, and I come back and they say, "Hey, we gotta make this triangle pipe. It's awesome." And I'm just like, "Oh no." that thing won't work. Like, that's not how pipes work. That is no way. Like, and, and everybody's like, this is gonna be awesome. We have to do a triangle pipe. And I'm like, oh, fuck, it's, it's, it's triangle pipe. So I spent like a month <laughs> figuring out how to make this work. Cause at first, the first, like the original concept was super flat, like a pancake, right? And there's no room for water to go anywhere. And the rules with that are the water just wants to come travel up towards your mouth. So I modeled a bunch of different ones, printed them out, some good, some horrible, figuring out how to give that water somewhere to go, right? To, to give that volume where the water can bubble and it won't just travel straight up to your mouth. When you're dealing with a simple piece, like a very, very simple piece, any of these little lines you can add to me are very, very important. Since this is all one piece, this isn't like a, a regular bubbler where you have a can and a stem place for the water to bubble separate from the mouthpiece. It's all one piece, so we kind of have to section off these volumes for this to happen. You know, we started out with just a just a cylinder that traveled up the wall, and then that cylinder got bigger to the point where it was a little awkward, and then realizing that I could taper, make it taper slightly, so it's larger at the top and getting a little skinnier towards the bottom, so it really fits in your hand. This is the final kind of design uh, iteration we, we settled on. I knew it was gonna work, I just didn't know how well. First time I put water in one, I turned to uh, the other guy with me, he was like, this is a monster. To get it to this point and then to how well it works was like going from a non-functional concept to one of my favorite functional pieces was just a huge win for me. You can actually fill these up with way more water than you would think. They're kind of uh, deceptive in their ability to be able to kind of handle water. You can put a little water in there if you want, or you can fill it up, probably even a little more than that. But you'll notice like as you hit, like the, the bubbles kind of stay within this cylinder here. They don't really travel up, which was, it's what I wanted, but it was a surprise to me and how well it kind of stayed within that region. I mean, you can rip it. You'll never hit one like that, but like, man, like, the way that the water stays where it should was a huge lesson for me. I've been making pipes for 20 years and I've never really played around with this before and it's something that I'm gonna be hitting hard in um, a lot of designs in the future. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions on how we could make a, you know, this more informative to you, um, anything else you would like to see about how the designs are made, uh, anything else here at Grab, please leave it in the comments. Um, please subscribe and please uh, tell your friends. Thanks for watching.